does. Right. Don't rely on this recording, but I'm going to record anyway. So we used an on online compiler. I'll just agree and proceed. And I think we went through mostly print and, and remember you created your own header. Yeah. So if, if I'm you, I'll just copy and paste my header across. And by the end of the session, you can give it your own name. What symbol did we did we use for comments? The hashtag. So sort out your head header as soon as possible. You should be done. I'll come and have a look at what you're doing. Uh, update. Maybe I'll put description. Yeah. You give it a reasonable description. I'm just going to put this. Second Python class or something. And I believe we went through a couple of printing and also we went through, started doing, working on the mats, right? So I'll put math expressions because I just want to print that out as um, on the output, as a string on the output. So let's say a variable called um, what variable? Have three, more three, ten more three, and then I'll print. What be the output on the screen? Can someone tell me? Are you sure? Why? So it's pretty much the same code that I've rewritten to this. Anybody, can anybody tell me why I have to put this? On line eight, why do we need a string there? Hmm? So because this is an integer variable, right? And then you have a strings and you are concatenating an integer to a string. So it's easier to just have them in the same data type. Yeah. Give you a bit of time to type your own, create your own and other things and keep going. Right. So if we've got, let's say, 
at the moment we know mod bar is what? The value is what? One. So I can actually just equate mod bar to itself. Like if you want to keep adding um maybe a number to the results, I can just write a variable um plus or minus um any number. So if I write this, what do we expect the output of mod var to be? Three, because mod var is one here. So one plus two is three, right? Should I make it bigger? That will hide the stuff. It's big enough to see, isn't it? Right, so let's see. I'll just print it out. What did I miss? Oh, already converted to string there. So, yeah. Let's work it out. Can anybody see what I'm doing wrong? Oh, it's Oh, oh, okay. It's just the way that, yeah, the way I'm printing it up. So let's put an equal sign. Now it makes more sense, right? Because here we're not really converting, we're just um, printing out the output generated. So what we have there, if the value of mod by is equals to three, do we agree that um, if I do this, um, and I'll just do plus equal to two. What would we expect the output of line 12 to be in terms of the actual number? <clears throat> Any other intake? Line 11, what's the value of mod bar? We just did that. Was it three? So the same three plus two? Five. So pretty much I'll just run that here to show you. So it's equal to five. Um what that means is that if I write um let's say if we write x equal to um one we need to give it a value first. And then again, we write X equal to X plus one. It's the same as writing. I'll do that. It's the same as writing X plus equal to one. We agree with that. Same if we wrote X plus equal to three is the same as um, X equals X plus three, right? Cool. What will be the value of X on line 16? Value of X on line 16? Right. So we touched on something which was string concatenation as well. Basically, what I'm going to do is just define a couple of variables, attach some strings to them, and see if I can just add them together into one variable. So if we have something like, um, I don't know, uh, let's use what these people are using, um, the greeting to be hello. Then we need a separation. 
a separator. The separator can be just comma with a space, um, an address. So who we are addressing or addressee to be the world. Punctuation. The exclamation. Then we say we want to do the whole greeting. And this way we do the concatenation where we take each of them and add them together, right? So we simply append in one to the end of the other. So then I can print the whole thing. But before I do that, I just want to separate what we've done, the two things we've done. So I'll print this out as well. Oh, yeah. They run it there, yeah? I'll let you have a go. Um, you can use first name, second name, um, different things to just print out. You just simply assign in different variables to um, different strings to different variables and try to concatenate them by using the add operator there. So basically we've done what? Some variables, some maths, um, some printing to the screen, but mostly we've just been printing to the screen. So we're interested in what? Getting some user inputs, right? So let's say user inputs. And that is basically as simple as asking the user for input. But the thing is, when you get input from the user, you need to find some, have somewhere to store it. Basically, you need a memory space to store it. And how do we use, how do we do that? Using Z variables, right? So let's say, um, do, 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 do. we just say, print to the user. Enter something. And we're going to assign whatever the user prints to a variable called something, right? So the keyword to get input from the user is simply input. We take it and let's see what, whether we can print what the user entered using concatenation. We entered something this is comma see if it works they didn't scream at us enter something so it prints out you enter something cool right ask away Sorry. Use the line reference, yeah? Yes, sir. For the whole greeting of stuff, let's say you want to add any typical words. Yeah, is it these ones? Yeah. Uh -huh. After the whole, after you print the new greeting, every word, let's say you want to add IDS to the words. 
So which one? The world. World. Yeah, I think it's. Oh, you want to add something to this? Yeah. Okay. Talk me through it. Let's say I want to add I E S to the board. So basically, you just want to do this. Address C is equal to. Address C plus what? Yes. Hmm? The word I is. See if it works. If it doesn't, it will complain at us. It didn't complain. So. So. Where is it? You see it on, yeah. So we've got it printed there. Yeah. So you can come, it's concatenation, it's the same idea eh? on that. In this particular case, if you want that to reflect on um, the greetings, but if you wanted to do it here, you could do it here as well. Let's see if that will work. And it works. So we've got, can't find it. So hello world is, yeah? I'll just leave it as what you have made and we can continue with the inputs. Are we okay with the inputs, Dad? Yeah? Sorry. Could you just run back a bit? So. Should I go over it? So the key word is input and input with nothing inside would just simply prompt the user. So if I run it, you notice it prompts me for an input on the enter something. And the prompt is on the next line. That's important, okay? The prompt is on the next line because I simply just put the input function there and it's waiting for the user to input um, some details. But when you, give something into the computer, you need somewhere to store it. So in this case, a variable, a variable reserves a memory space, right? So once we get an input, we capture the input and I just say, um, maybe say something nice, I don't know why I chose that. And line 30, we just simply print what the user said, which is you've, we, this is a test, a string we have provided. But what the user said is actually there, right? Technically, we don't need this because we are using the format. Ask, ask, well, ask, input ask. Is, uh, input is a string original. Because you can enter both numbers. And you can enter both numbers and strings. But remember, um, in Python, it tries to guess what the data type is. So there's no way, if you want to be number specifically, can you not, is there not a function with like num input or something? Um, I think there is a specific function for that. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but there are ways that we can do it. If by next week we've not sorted it out, let me know. Yeah. You, there are ways, you can always convert the variable afterwards to make it specific. The same way when we are printing a, um, a string, we can convert to string, a number to string. Okay, so you can type number and see. Um, so I did say something was important. Can I continue? Yeah. So let's try another variable. Um, maybe favorite movie. In here, I'm prompting the user input and in that same function, I'm going to put the your favorite movie. And I believe it's a comma. If not, I'll fix it. 
So the first one, I'll just type something. And the favorite movie title, movie. Now I will re rerun it again and see your um what you observe here. Let me put a comma there, a space there. We're just interested. We're just only interested. I want you to pay attention. We're only interested in what line, the output of line 29 and then line 31. Okay. How they behave. They both behave. So this is, we are on line 29 now. So I'll just say, I don't know, 29. And then we are on line 31 now. So I'll put 31 there. Can someone tell me the difference in terms of how these two lines behave? First of all, do you see a difference in the way that we are using input? Yes. yes. What do you see? Um, first one. The prompt the prompt appears on the following line. And the second one. Okay. First of all, there's there's something included, which is the string prompting the user or the information the user needs to know what they are inputting. Mm -hmm. And it appears on the same line. That's what you were going to say? Yes. Yeah, good. So if you want it to appear on the same line, definitely use this one. And normally people would just kind of use their own prompt. So if I do this, then it would just appear on the outputs. Let's say, hi, the favorite movie. I don't know. What's your favorite movie? I don't know. Happy Feet or something. What I had. Don't even think I've watched the movie. Right? So this one, easy, you choose your own prompt or something similar to what happens on um, a terminal window or something like that. Right, so the task is to prompt the user what is their name. So we can just simply, um, I think I'm just going to do the second one, right? Which basically we assign name to what? Somebody tell me. Talk me through it. Into brackets. Remember, whatever is in the code is a test and will appear exactly the same as it is, yeah? You notice these things the more you type, right? So it's better to type it yourself than for me to type for you. So what is your name? And we're going to put a prompt there to just kind of ask the user to input their name. And we'll follow by what? Comma. Comma. And then we put, um, leave it there. And the other one should be basically music. Um, please pay attention if you've not finished, so at least you work alongside with me and you understand what I'm doing. What is your favorite food? Music. Type of music. And we put what there? Comma. Food equals... Input what is your favorite food? Oh, terrible. And I'll go with common. So let's put the prompt in all of them. Can leave a space if you want. And I'm gonna button print. In the you said ah. what something missing? Your name. Hmm? Your name is We can print it on a separate line, right? Oh, 
They are all on the separate or same line. Was it on the separate? Mm -hmm. Your favorite type of music was then what? Then another. We can we can concatenate it. Then. Hmm? Can someone answer? Uh, what are you asking? <laughs> Ask your question. Oh, I got food, food, food. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm saying, since we typed in the same name. Yeah. So this is the output, this previous stuff, right? Actually, I should do this. Um let's separate it. I'll print something there. So hopefully we we'll answer the question. This is something we we don't care about this anymore, right? And this also something. Now we are in tax one, right? What is your name? Somebody put something done. Can I hide this thing? Because it's not. I'm not enjoying this part. Wait. There it is. Yeah. Favorite type of music. Uh, what? Hmm? Music. <laughs> and then um, what is your favorite type of food? Something something is different here. Where is it? Did I print out the music at some point? Oh, no, it's because it's... Mm -hmm. We'll come back to that. There's something wrong here. We fix it. So basically we have, hello there, um, Dan. You said your favorite type of music. What did I do with music? Yeah. Ah, that's me, right. Favorite type of music was music, and you said your favorite type of food was food. So to answer your question, the answer is no. It's a function. Function takes in input, right? And as far as this function is concerned, the input function is concerned or method, it will take the first part as a string to print to the user to prompt them. And then the second part, whatever the user puts in, will just receive it and store it in this variable, yeah? Um, can I clear it and run it again to see what went wrong? Well, there was, it was here, right? Line 35, there's something strange. Okay, it was working properly now. Yes. It's just a programming environment for you. Okay. So I'm going to put tax two at the bottom. I think we've all had a chance to discuss, so I'm not going to go through it step by step. Um, key tax is just basically it's a minute thing. So it's a call thing. Get the number of test um, messages the person sent and the time they sent spent on um, on your phone and you try to calculate the total cost. 
given certain parameters that's been given. So let's see what I've got written down. So basically I've got a variable called minutes. I've got another variable called test and I'll print, um, you are on the phone for this minutes. We don't want this. We want the prompt from the user. So let's get that um, input. Um, how long, how long were you on the phone for? And there'll be a comma. We all know this, right? Please switch on your brains. Um, don't let me go through step by step and you ask me exactly the same questions. Yeah. And I'm going to delete that minutes. Do the same for test. How many test messages did you spend? How many tests? And you are on the phone for minutes. And also we do total cost equals this, that, 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 and print that. Hopefully that will run. Um, something, something, um, something, something, something. Now we should be, how long were you on the phone for? 23, this, that, and that. So one thing that someone did very well in identifying is basically the conversion of this to, um, the strings to numbers. So basically you can just convert them here. That's to put into int in bracket there. Are you okay up to this point or is there something you don't get? If not, please let me know. Which means I probably have to do some further conversion. So let me put, convert this to string. Convert that to also string. And do the same for this one. Does this kind of make sense to everyone? Yeah? Okay, if it makes sense, then it means we done with tax two. I'm just fast forwarding the output to tax two. Oops, tax two now. So 22 is that that we've got the reasonable numbers. Yeah? Make sense? Good. Um, we've just done some type conversions. So I'm gonna jump into, I think I've got, just bear with me. I will find them. When I found something I wanted to share with you as a class. If I have it, then great. So, so far we've seen what? Different type casting there. Sorry? But I'll continue anyway. <laughs> We're finishing soon. Right, we've seen two types of type casting so far. Can someone point it out to me? Type casting to change from one data type to the other. We've seen integer, we've seen what? The string, right? The same way integer is what? Int, and the string is str, right? If you want to change to a floating point or a number with, floating point will be float, right? Number with a decimal number, right? The ones that have decimal numbers. Pretty much that takes care of that. Should I use a new set of code or just keep building on to this one? I think it's a bit too much. So let's see. I'll pull this out, create a new one. Then make it big. 
So let's, uh, do you want to go now? Can I double check? Do you have a question for me up to this point? No? So when we say, if something happens, do something else, do something else. We're just simply checking conditions, right? And normally when we check in th um, the conditions, we are looking at whether something is equal to something, whether someone something is greater than, whether something is less than, right? So if you look at this, if I write A equals um, B, um, no, A equals 10 at this point. What I'm actually doing, I'm not comparing A to 10, but I'm assigning 10 to A, right? So it means that we need kind of a different equal sign in order to compare rather than to do assignment. Does it make sense? Yeah? So let's say B equals 20. And if I print A equals B, let's see if that will work. Run it, it prints false. So here I'm actually doing what? Comparison, yeah? If I say B equals 10 and I run it, it says true because what B, uh, B and A are actually the same, right? So a few things to note that we can use, we'll make use of all of them practically. I'll just dump them here and I'll comment them out. So if I do this, you notice the equal sign, we've just tested it out, was double equal when we are doing comparison. Not equals is exclamation equal to um, less than, I think the rest are kind of intuitive. It's just an equal, not equal. And people tend to do a lot of mistakes when it comes to using the equal sign. If you use the assignment instead of double equal in most programming languages, it will not tell you there's a syntax error, but you get a runtime error, meaning that you guess the output may not look the way you want it to look. Good? Yeah? So let's try something. If let's uh, check, let's check. Um, let me do this if that will work. Come on, the run it. That's A equals B is false. Let's print out the other one, A not equal to B. I think you can see the trend now, right? Less than B. Um, next, greater than. Then greater than or equal to. Then I'll run all of them. And you've got your answers there, right? Keyword to get input from the user is what? Input. We don't need a 10, so we can just simply prompt the user for a first number there. So first number. And the second one, input. Huh, not input. Start. Mm 
Maxi bakın. Input second number, first number, give a prompt. Give a prompt, then come. Yeah? That's all I ask you to do. Okay? Can I double check? Does this actually make sense to you? So at the moment, what is happening is is simply using the conditional um conditional equations to just basically check whether a is equal to b, a is not equal to, and it's just simply printing what true or false, right? We didn't tell it to print this true or false, but what if we want more control? What if we want to say if a equals to b, do something, right? Else, if A is not equal to B, do something else. Does that make sense? Right. So basically, it means we are doing what? We are dealing with if or if else statements, right? So I'll just put if on line 15, let's check the first one. If A is equal to B, we want to do something and what we want to say is basically print, I don't know. Here I'm using the tab, okay? Meaning everything under the tab will work. I've, I've left something intentionally. So print A is equal to B. And because this we want this string printed out, we put it in a string format. Now we use the column. Now this column is necessary. We use the column to say, it's like showing the block that belongs to this if, okay? And then we are using the tab to also show the block that belongs to this if statement, right? Let me put, this one, I'll, actually that's not necessary. I'll print down here. Done executing. What you notice is that this print is not it doesn't come under this tab. Does that make sense? So it means that it exits the if statement. So I expect whatever happens, this should print. Now I'm moving this because we know that this will run only when A is equal to B anyway. So I want this to always equal to, equate to a true. Does that make sense? Yeah? Line 15 says, if A is equal to B, do something. And as long as these two are tab, there's a tab here, it means they are under this if statement, right? Yeah? yeah? This line will only run when A is equal to B. So we expect this to be a true, yeah? And we expect this line to always run. So let's run it and see. So I'll put maybe 50. And 50. Then we just see the line executed here. A is equal to B, which means A equals B is true. Right? And then it says done executing. Let's run the same code but with that, with uh, values that are not equal to each other. So I'll put maybe 50 and then 10. I need to leave a space here. Let me leave a space. 50 and 10. Then I'll run it. Oh, run again. Sorry. <laughs> 50, 10. And you realize that A equals to B never printed. And this line never printed. Because what? The condition is not true. So it means that when it gets to line 15, it will check if the condition is true, then it will step in. If it is not true, it will just go, skip to the next block of code to run. That is why line 18 will always print, but 15 to 17 did not print here. Does it make sense? Uh, the, the column looks after A is equal to 
is it necessary, necessary like the tab or is this literally necessary? this this is necessary to show that it's like saying um in english when you're writing and you say um the names of the people in the class are you normally people will put a column and then you have bullet 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 to put a list right yeah right now let's what if a is not equal to b and we want it to check we want to check another condition right but we just simply want to say if else we don't really don't want to check too much we just somebody say if a is equal to b do something else do something else yeah we just simply say else then again what falls within the print Let's make it big. Need to be. But again, it's a block, so we can do something, we can do more than that, right? So I'm going to move this in there, which means this block, as long as it's a tab, can keep going, can pre keep printing and checking several, uh, outputting several things, right? So let's run it again, 50, 50. We get an equal sign. We notice that A is not equal to B, ne never printed. This printed, that printed. Yeah, makes sense? Yeah, but this never printed. Let's see, um, run it again. And then we have 50, 10. Again, the equal one did not print, but the not equal one printed out. Yeah? Let me leave space here, so at least... I'll leave it up so at least on the output we can tell. So, ask away. Sorry? Oh, you mean this info this information? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put anything there. This is just a, a test we are putting as a message, so it makes sense to us and we can understand. So 50. Whatever you put in this block will run when A equals to B. You can just say if A is equal to B, scream and it will come, it will scream, right? Yeah. Good. So 50, 10, and that works for us. Yeah. Now we know the block of code we are running. Yeah. So let's test a bit more. So what if we say, First of all, we check if A is not equal to B, right? We are, we understand up to this point, yeah? So we just simply say, if A is not equal to B, we're doing something. What if we want to do something else before we finally check the else statement? So let's say if A is great. After we check if A is equal to B, if it is not equal to, then we say, else if and it's actually elif like combined if it's different for different programming in languages some languages you can have else if separate as well so we check else if something i need your head your head facing the board sorry good thank you mexico cool. elif a is greater than b we did less than next. So if A is less than B, then again, we have our block. And again, we can have this sitting in the block. Which means at this point, A is not equal to B will only print if what A is greater than or equal to B or it's not equal to B, but we don't need an equal sign anyway. So let's run it again. We have 50, 20, and we say the A is not equal to B what printed, right? So let's make A greater than B. 
with a check A less than B, right? I'll run it again. Let's make A 30 and B 50. Then realize that A is less than B printed there and B A is less than B. We cool? Yeah? I'll leave this for you to, um, to work on. You have access to this, and I want you to do the same. So you can have another LIF following, right? I want you to complete it with more LIF blocks, checking these final three. Yeah? So complete the code for me. I'll leave it. Just take uh, pictures if you need to. Take snapshots so you can have access to it and write it down. To have your attention. Right, so we gonna use if else shorthand. Um, the key thing here is that if you have only one line um, to print, at the moment we've been printing out multiple lines. So if you have only one line, you can just use a shorthand basically where you just say, um, let me, yeah, let me move that a button. You can simply say if A is greater than B, then where you had a, a column, you just print afterwards. You don't necessarily need to indent it or anything. A is greater than B. Another shorthand, let me run this so you know. So let's put something greater, 40. one right so you got the a greater than b printed there yeah i'm going to move the done done executing to the bottom so again let's try another shorthand um to print across in this case we only did one if so let's look at where we have if else right so we can say print Print. What's that? <laughs> print. Um, let's say A. If A is greater than B. Else, remember, notice there's no semicolon in this case. Print. B. Let's try it out. 60, one, and again, we got an A, right? A printed out because it's greater. Let's run it out again and print A to be smaller and then B to be bigger. Then we had the B printed out, okay? So the same, I can just say, A is greater than B here, else B is greater than A. Okay. Yeah. Works out. Does this make sense to all of us? So let's look at more stuff. So basically, we just start with one else. So something similar to the else if. Remember earlier, we just printed A, B, C, right? So let's do that. So if A is greater, you print what? Print A if A is, A is greater, else print B. Else print C. Did I miss something? I'll fix it in a second. So we've got, if A is greater, um, 
print a if a is greater than this um let's check another one Okay. We have else print B if A is equal to B, then we can have a last else print C, for example. So we've more or less did an elif there. Hopefully that will run. 50, 50, and that will print B. So that sort of answers uh, Dan's question earlier. Yeah? In terms of short time. Um, take a photograph, do something, and we just carry on. What if we just want to do some logical operations? Logic, logic, A and B, A or C. If you need a break, you can take it by yourself now. Yeah? Logic, you're thinking logic, because we want to check if, what if A is equal to B or A equals, A, A equals C, right? A equals B and A equals C. So you just start to combine things now, right? And keyword is quite simple. You can use and as an and or or as no. So I'll put another comma there and say if else logic. So let's have if let's say A is greater than B and C is less than A. Uh, A greater. Then we do something. We can just print. Both conditions are true. Now we just need to input um, C as well. So I'm gonna to go to the top and I'll ask them to input C. And let's make it reasonable. Say input A, input number A. Input number B and C. Right? So run it, don't know. Uh, we are aiming for A to be less than B. So 10 and B should be 50 and C should be less than A, I'll put two. Then we've got, um, doo -doo 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 -doos. what did I miss? We've got a done executing. So we've got, Oh, C should be greater than A, so my bad. So we have 10, 50, 50, for example. Then did I miss something? All these are met except this one. Does someone see something I don't? Or well, everybody's brain is switched off. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna input the same thing. If there's a, something I'm missing, I will just pick it up. Let's do for an all condition as well. A true for and because I need you to have it. They're not true for all.
A should be greater than B. That is where the problem is. And C should be greater than A, 50. That's where the problem is. Then what is missing? String line 31. And let's see what the issue is. And what was the error? Forty B. Thirty C is do, 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 greater than A. No. C is not defined. I thought we did. Oh, there. We have gone in circles. <laughs> Right, for all. So that sort of concludes our stuff. So pretty much we've got the AND logic, we've got the all logic as well. If you have, let's say, a, a small project to check, let's say, if someone got this, I think it used to be given in the previous years. If someone got above 70, above 90, it's an A plus, for example, above 70 is A, um, then between 70 and uh, 90 is A, then you've got B, C, then you, you start using what? If the grade is greater than 70 and less than this, if the grade is greater than 60 and less than that and other things, right? I should have used else if here, I didn't, but anyway, you've got a gist, you've got the idea, right? Um, then you have, we would, Pause on not, you've got and, or, and then not, not will just be what, N-O-T, right? Cool. So pretty much that covers the stuff that we've done today. Let's look at a quick recap. We started off from where we left off last week, which is modulus, mathematical operations. So, and then we did concatenated versions of the math operation, which is plus equals or minus equals, which is exactly the same as the, var the variable plus itself or minus itself, minus itself and another one, okay? Then um, we started playing with um, um, conversion or type casting. And also um, we did the same for other variables as well. Went on with string concatenation where we had some um, different strings that are um, assigned to different variables. And we tried to add them in one sentence and someone did ask, what if we have this? And Savia saved the class and with that question, right? Then we ended up um, to, uh, putting all of them together and printing them in one word. So, we are started by asking the user to input something. And we said, if you do this, the print, the prompt goes to what? The next line. Do we remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the prompt goes to the next line. And if we use this approach, the prompt will remain on the same line. Then we went on further, did some task. We did a tax one, tax two. And then also we that moved us not to that, but moved us to um, if else statements. And before the if else statements, we looked at the conditional operators that we have. And we say that equals is not the same as single equal sign because single equal sign is assignment. Then we walk through a couple of examples and if else, elif, and I made a mistake here earlier, made this capital and it's supposed to be small letters, and we walk through up to the point where we are at the moment. Can I double check with you? 
have you understood most of the stuff we've talked about? Do you have any question for me? If so, please ask. I'm stopping the recording here now.